So people will eat our meat and they'll eat somebody else's meat of the same animal and they say, well, why does yours taste so much better? So all grass-fed is not the same. It's okay. not even close to being the same. It is, it is very, very different. So what went into the soil that went into the grass that went into the animal, that went into the offspring, that went into the fallen offspring, went into the fallen mm. offspring. And we're improving the genetics through epigenetics, which is, you know, it's like chess, 10 moves ahead. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson and I'm in Bend on the eastern side of Oregon with a very interesting rancher, Alan Rousseau. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Alan's with Pine Mountain Ranch and you are raising some very unusual animals. Mm -hmm. Elk, yak, um, buffalo. Well, elk not on this ranch. A okay. friend of ours does the elk, but we do the yaks. Um, we do the uh, heritage varieties and pigs. We do uh, bison or mm -hmm. buffalo. Mm -hmm. Um, and in the past, we've done bighorn doll sheep, um, we've done uh, geese, uh, heritage turkeys, uh, pasture chickens, uh, heritage varieties, of course, and we do layers, layer, layering hens for eggs. And wow. we produce eggs for goose eggs, stock eggs, chicken oh, eggs, wonderful. turkey eggs, all of those. I mean, you've got a real un unusual, both past and present, set of animals that you're raising. Right. And when we walked in here, what you started to tell me about is that a rancher with animals really could be called a grass farmer. Did I understand that right? Right. Um, what do you well, there's people that call themselves grass farmers, but let's go further than that. Let's go into the soil. Um, and if you're familiar with epigenetics, epigenetics is um, we pass on from what we eat. Like a, a wonderful uh, book that I recently read is um, if someone is going to get pregnant, both the husband and wife should eat the correct meals for six months prior to even conceiving. Even if the father drinks a drink of alcohol six months prior or five months prior to conceiving that child, that is in the makeup of that child. Mm. And they're learning more and more that children that are born, especially now with the diets that, that mm. American or, or the Western culture, you know, this Western whole thing, which is different than the rest of the world. Most third world countries are eating organic or they're eating grass fed okay. or they're eating okay. the things that, that we used to eat maybe 100 years ago, 100, maybe 110 years ago. Everything was organic. Right. Today right. it is not and it, it has changed and it's been manipulated and, and it has a different energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everything about I mean, it is a, is the, a different form of energy. Find animal, animal Everything. places and the food they're eating and the hormones and steroids. I mean, that's part of why we're interested in what you're doing sure. because. Sure. These, these are animals that are running around in right. pasture so, eating good stuff. Now we have to look back for us. If I study epigenetics in humans, it's the same for animals. It is very interesting. A lot of farmers, even commercial farmers today, know that they have to give their animals certain minerals, certain selenium, all these different minerals, copper, cobalt, everything that makes up that animal to be healthy. And, and it's so funny because that farmer doesn't take vitamins as well as he gives his own animals some days. And that, that is more of a farmer that does a cow-calf operation, not a farmer that maybe is doing feedlot and, and they're doing things above and beyond that. They're doing growth hormones, they're, they're feeding things that, that uh, affect that animal's digestive system. They're literally killing that animal before it dies. It's slowly dying before it is butchered. Uh, uh, and the that's whole- That's real cruelty. That is real cruelty. Yeah, and the whole concept here is you know, let's look at our soil. What do we have as the makeup? And, and we're really very blessed. We live in central Oregon. We're at a higher elevation. We're at 3,500 feet. We have some of the best grass in the country because of that. The protein content in the grass here is 12 to 22 percent. Now, if I was to grow out in Willamette Valley grass, the grass protein over there could be 7 to 9 percent. Wow, wow. So people will eat our meat and they'll eat somebody else's meat of the same animal and they say, well, why does yours taste so much better? So all grass-fed is not the same. It's okay. not even close to being the same. It is, it is very, very different. So what went into the soil, that went into the grass, that went into the animal, that went into the offspring, that went into the fallen offspring, went into the fallen mm. offspring, and we're improving the genetics through epigenetics, which is, you know, it's like chess, 10 moves ahead. You How think, many farmers are thinking 10 you know, moves that, ahead? It makes me think about the Native American 
prescription to be thinking seven generations ahead, and that's a version of what you're doing here. If you're thinking exactly. generations ahead. Right. Um, and somebody's already done that for me with the yaks, for example, for how many thousands of years have yaks been domesticated? Now, from what I understand, in, in uh, China, they had studied the yak and the yak meat, and people, what they call the Blue Ribbon Area of Tibet, a doctor came up to me and told me about this, a doctor from Tibet, and she is a doctor in China, and she's also an American physician, but she ah. believes more in the medicine there than here, um, where we're not given a pill for something that is giving you a side effect that is just kind of masking up something. It really isn't curing it. So, uh, and with yaks, for example, she was telling me there's anti-agent properties that are unique to yak meat. Really? That they studied in Chinese medicine. And they've studied this, uh, like I said, the blue ribbon area of Tibet. Mm -hmm. They studied the people there, the culture there, the age of the people. Uh, they still have a, a traditional diet that they've had for thousands of years, and they move around and they migrate. And of course, they're drinking glacier milk. Glacier milk is the runoff at high elevations of glacier where there's so much mineral content yes. in the water that it is white. Yes. There's okay. up to 90 yeah. different yeah. minerals in the water. But also, these animals at that elevation, they're drinking that water. They're enjoying that clean, fresh air at that high elevation. The oxygen level is different. The people are moving around. There are people that are 90 mm. to 100 years old that are still full labor. Wow. And, wow. and these are her family. And she said to me, she says, well, how old do you think I am? And I said, well, I don't know, 40, 45. She goes, no, I'm 60. And, and she goes, well, I am just the proof that this yes. is... Yes. Yes. what they have studied and it really hasn't come you know to face here in, in our country and and you know it's not as profitable this animal takes three years to raise it's a very mm. small animal mm. but mm. you can run three to the same acreage as one bee so and actually it's more profitable at least for me as a farmer uh, or a rancher it's definitely more profitable than raising beef it's easier on my ground i can produce more offspring um, it, it has a, a better effect when the animals move. They have sharp uh, hoofs, they chop and they aerate the soil. Oh, uh, oh. Cattle now have become so large, their feet are so large that they compact the soil. It's much harder on the land to recover. It takes longer. Uh, their manure probably breaks down three times as fast as regular cow manure. First of all, the pie is a third of the size, so mm -hmm, that mm -hmm, goes mm -hmm. without saying, mm -hmm. but the actual manure itself breaks down. The animal is much more efficient. A yak, for example, it needs about 1% of its body weight for feed. A beef cow is about 3%, a buffalo is about 2%. Oh, yeah. And a part of this is also based on, uh, you know, if you took three yaks, you know, what is three yaks in comparison to one beef? You, you know, you look at it that way. So how much does an animal eat? Uh, what does it put back to the soil? Um, what grasses does it eat? What weeds does it eliminate that shouldn't be there? Um, the weed seed survives in their droppings. When I, when I bought half this ranch, half of it was completely dead in desert. And within probably a two to three year period, the buffalo reseeded my whole back pasture, which was desert, sand desert. The and I have photos. The buffalo reseeded it? Yeah, the weed seed will survive. Yep, and I would see grass come up in their mm -hmm, droppings mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. spread out from there and spread and spread and spread. And of course, in the wintertime, I fed hay out there. So there was some seed in the hay, but you know, they trampled it down. They worked it into the soil and I've never seeded that field. And I'll show you that field when we go back there. You'll be amazed. It looks like a golf course. So, it does. Well, this, I'm looking at this, this one right here. You uh -huh. pointed out to me, there aren't any weeds in here. I mean, it's there's, there's rich, very, very there's few. Any. And in fact, this, this has actually been grazed, I would say the least, because this was actually a lawn area. Oh. And we were like, well, I'm paying, and I'm sitting on a tractor lawnmower, and I'm making my fa light face. I grew up where my family had four acres of lawn. Oh I grew up back east, and that was just wow. a norm thing. Sure. I mean, people back in the day, you were, you look at older cultures, you were wealthy if you had the big lawns. And now, if you could take that big lawn and turn it into a pasture, could you imagine how much mm -hmm. grass, and, the, and they say there's not enough grass to have all animals graze. All the lawns into good grass, pasture grass. Whether, whether it be lawn animals. or vegetable gardens or yes. whatever. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, so do we spend money, gasoline, labor, time, burn energy, pollute the environment to mow a lawn, fertilize it that runs down into the, the gutters, With that goes chemicals. into our stream, that goes into our lakes, that go into our ocean, or do we start converting, mm. converting our mm. land mm. to... Uh, useful and, and it can still be very beautiful and very very pretty and and um, 
you become more one with it. Yes. Because yes. it isn't something you're trying to control nature. Let nature so you're, flow. So you're using you're using the animals, for example, here, as you yep. were saying, to do a lot of the grounds work, if you exactly. will, keeping yeah. the keeping sure. it alive. Sure. And you said these the ox here, this this group, uh -huh. including some cute little ones. Yeah. Um, have been here in this paddock for a few days, you said? Yeah, this is um, a little over half acre, and um, I think there's 15, 14 or 15 cows in here, and about a half dozen calves. Um, so they'll feed on this for about five to seven days. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, you can see some of it is a little bit of coming down to dirt in some places. Well, actually, this, this was dirt be... before that because uh -huh. this was a hog pasture for oh, a while. Okay. So the hogs turned it over. We're actually. Um, have it grazed down and this year I'm going to recultivate it because of the hogs and um, I'm going to do a, it's not a every time you plow a property you have a tendency to blow away your topsoil yes, yes. so if you can overseed into an existing area so that'll be what I'll do I'll, I'll disc it very lightly I'll go back and, and then I'll seed it and then um, you know let it grow without losing the topsoil you can right up and down and I, I see neighbors all the time that diss their field, diss their field and, and it hasn't been seeded for a month, month and a half, two months and I'm watching all their topsoil blow away. Yes. The grass grows back in it's all yellow. There's no green, there's no lush, there's there's nothing left there. How many hundreds of years did it take to create that topsoil that was blown away in four weeks? I, we've, I've read it takes what, hundreds of years, sometimes longer yeah. depending on where it is. Yeah. So. You know, are we adding more to our soil or are we taking more out of it um, nutrient-wise? Yeah. So yeah. we've got to just add more, add more, add more, and, and the soil has got to be... You know, so they'll be here for four, five, six, seven days, something like that, you said. Yep. And when it looks right, you judge that. Right. You said that we brought here to this kind of, this paddock. Right, this, right. It'll go know, here. Go. Uh, it'll go down my road area. My road okay. area one time was a nice manicured lawn. This was an equestrian hunter jumper horse ranch oh, okay. Um, okay. and as a lot of friends and neighbors call them pasture ornaments because <laughs> I had horses here I had up to 30 horses on this ranch you can see all the beautiful shelters yeah and I would have maybe two or three people out of the 30 horses that were owned ride them once or twice a year they would come out they would feed these animals you know it was a wonderful thing it was like a, a pet or a child for some of them I had a lot of women boarders that didn't have children, and these were like their children. And I could see that connection, and that was wonderful. But I could also see that there's, you know, a, a greater value here for this for this yes. property. And, yes. and I feed maybe a thousand people on 41 acres between this one and a couple other ranches. Wow, uh, uh, that's so. 41 acres. 41 acres here. So what you see that goes back to the tree line is 41 acres. I've run up to 120 head here, four to 5,000 chickens, turkeys, ducks, and geese in a proper rotation. So a chicken, the life cycle for a good pasture chicken is probably 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, for a duck, depending on what variety, might be 12 to 16. Mm -hmm. A heritage mm -hmm. turkey might be five to six months. So each one of them, if you took, in, in nature, the turkeys followed the buffalo. They would go by, go okay. through their cow pies, and get the bugs and eat all the things, and if you followed that. So we've pretty much redone nature, not redone it, but copied followed, it. Followed it, yeah. Yes, yeah. similar. I managed it a little bit, and we had the turkeys follow behind the buffalo, and we had the ducks and the geese follow behind the buffalo, and we picked okay. specific varieties that would fit best for the climate. Mm -hmm. We have two weeks mm -hmm. out of the year where we don't get a frost, in the, winter, in the summer here, you know, in July, it snowed in, in Bend. So oh, okay. it's okay. very uh, excellent climate for grazing animals, for grass. Uh, not so good for vegetables. You, you, you have to manipulate, you have to scoop houses, do different things, grow certain varieties that are cold region varieties. But uh, livestock, it was meant to be. Buffalo existed all the way to Burns. 170 miles from here, they found heads in the lake. When the lake dried up in the 30s, they found buffalo skulls in the lake there, and they believe that they ran all the way down to uh, Drake Park uh, and drank out of the Deschutes River. So if you look at a long, long time ago, the grass was here. Now the grass has gone away. Juniper has come up. It's yeah. robbed the soil. Yeah. It's taken away that. from the grass. If you look at pictures of the early 1900s when the settlers first came here, the grass was beautiful. It was, it was beautiful prairie grass. It was very different than what we have and see today. 
Uh, and the other issue today is weeds have taken over. Yes. The animals that ate those grasses that kept them healthy, and you've watched TED Talks and you've probably seen Alan Savory. Yes. Alan Savory yes. and the elephants in Africa and, and the terrible mistake that, that mm. happened there. And But now he has a life's definite purpose to bring back the desert areas, to bring back the grasses. You know, you look at you look at global warming. They they talk Ben Oregon. We'll, we'll probably change to seven degrees, maybe warmer, yeah. over the next yeah. hundred years. Um, but you look at that in this situation here. That the grass in this area is going to be good, and it's going to get better even with that warming. We're going to have certain effects up in the mountains. Will we have the runoff? Mm -hmm. Will we have mm -hmm. the ability to irrigate? Mm -hmm. All those are going to be questions. But you know, how do you utilize all these things, and and how do we turn things back and and work with carbon and oxygen? And all these things that just you know, everything intermeshes. And, yes, yes. And we all intermingle and, and nature intermingles. And You're doing a kind of restoration project by yeah. reintroducing both right. older animals, if you will. I mean, right. older strangers. Native humans. heritage and indigenous species. Mm -hmm. Animals mm -hmm. that were here and before cattle. You know, you look at in the state of Oregon, it, it, to me, it's, it's sad. I have friends that are elk ranchers. And there's people that are trying to close down the elk branches. Why, I don't understand. Elk branches existed in the state of Oregon before there was ever a cattle ranch here. Uh -huh. They were fenced in, whether natives did it or the first settlers, they fenced them in and they ate. They belonged in this area. They were just, you know, confined. But um, they're, they're, they're shutting those down and they're running more cattle. Where It would be much more healthy to run more bison, to run more elk, to run more yaks. Yaks aren't, aren't native to... Oregon, but they're similar in climate mm -hmm. uh, to areas of China. Mm -hmm. They they will do well. Um, they have a hollow hair. They do excellent. Their their metabolism doesn't kick into 15 below zero. A buffalo has been tested at 33 below zero. Cattle die at 20 below. I mean, you know, in the so Midwest this year, for this kind they're, of location. Yeah, they're going to survive. They're not going to have the issues. They're not going to have the stress. We're not trying to calve them in January or February when it's very very cold and very hard on cattle and calves, but that's profitable. That brings them to auction at a certain mm -hmm. weight and a certain size. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is, and there's people that want that. I'm not, it's not something that we should condemn or anything, it's just something that exists. And how do we flow more with nature? Are we floating down the stream? Mm -hmm. Are we trying to swim upstream? What, what are we doing? And by having a calf in January, and it's five below, it's not good. I have friends that go out and say, yeah, I had to pull my calves in the barn. I had to throw them under heaters. Uh, I had to put them in a hot bath. Is, is that it's natural? It's unnatural. It is yeah. unnatural, yeah. but that's it. what the industry commands. That's what every single person that buys meat is voting for because of what they're buying. We're, we're buying, we vote, we have a vote. Our dollar is our vote every day. And every day we walk into a supermarket and we're willing to pay for what is there we're voting for that. If we go to a farmer's market and vote, buying our food, it's grass fed, we're voting for change. Yes, yes. So yes. everybody has to, doesn't have to, nobody has to do anything. Everybody should but, want but, to. But have the we opportunity, should want to. have the opportunity to think right, about that. Right. And if they're thinking the long term, right. both the soil of the health, so, uh, well, and the health, health of the soil. I mean, what do we change in, sure. in America? We change our medical is double digit and our food is 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 single digit of our income 10 percent nine percent flip-flop the rest of the world's flip-flop yes and we do have it backwards and everybody says well i can't afford that no you can't afford not to do it i consider you're going to cut 20 years off your life if you eat exactly i consider that that, that we attempt to eat as much grass-fed pasture you know, local as we can find i consider that the best health insurance Absolutely. i'm investing in at all yeah we got to see the yaks We've got, you've got the buffalo, or some of your buffalo here, uh -huh. right, and, and I noticed that the whole herd was back at the, you know, at the corner, and then as we just arrived here, they just, some of them came forward. So tell me sure. a little bit about the animals, because um, we're well, they're, with them. They're a curious animal, and um, a lead cow will stay back with the calves, and as you can see in the background, yeah. the calves are way in the background. So that's their thing, and these calves now are about three to four weeks old. If they were older, or I shouldn't say older, but younger, they would be even further. I mean, they might be up to a half mile away from us because they want to protect those calves. But as they get older, they sort of introduce their calves to you if they're familiar with you. And um, the other animals, sort of the out, 
Outlanders here. If you look in front, this is the lead bull that's here now. He's still kind of a young bull. He's about four years old. There's a three-year-old bull next to him, a couple of other bulls. Mm -hmm. So right now the bulls are between us and the herd. And if you had noticed, the heifers had come up, two three-year-old heifers had come up in between as well. Mm -hmm. And so those animals are kind of your flank animals. Uh, the cows will surround the calves and, and do a protective mode like that. So you've mentioned that, that both the bison meat and the animal is it's, it's closer to the wild mm -hmm. and better for the earth, the soil, the soil building and so right. forth, than, than cows than cattle. Right. And how does this, just tell us what it's like with with animals like this is I mean your operation is completely different from what I pictured from even raising cattle yeah. um, they're feeding the soil they're right um, there's a whole ecosystem that is constantly recovering mm -hmm. and, and adding and recovering and adding and um, we run the animals in such a way that we'll run the bison through a herd where before we ran the turkeys the turkeys would follow behind yeah. the bison yeah. they would work yeah. through the cow pies if we were running chickens or we were running uh, ducks or geese or whatever other animals behind the buffalo, behind the yaks. Buffalo eat certain grasses, yaks will eat other grasses. The bighorn sheep that we had ate certain grasses. Um, but we didn't intermingle those two because there's certain things that you can pass from one animal to another. Uh, so uh, there is a sequence of how you do it. You do a 21-day pasture rotation mm, system. Mm. Uh, the healthier thing about the meat. One, the omega-3s and 6s are balanced because we're, on, we're eating grass. We're not eating just... Uh, feeding them grain, we'd right, have high right. omega sixes. What they were meant to eat. Exactly. And have it eaten all their lives. Exactly. You know, and if you look at the grass, it, it is grass. It's there's not a lot of weeds. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. They'll eat mm -hmm. off the weed seed. They'll eat, remove the grass. They'll make the grass healthier, which will uh, thicken back in. You know, we'll do soil temp samples, test, and find out if the soil needs calcium, if it needs something different. Um, and in those situations, we we may add, but mostly it's just compost. So uh, the wonderful thing about buffalo, that it's 75% less fat than beef. It's 35% higher in protein. Ooh. What's the only Ooh. mammal in the world they've never found cancer in? Really? Is the buffalo. Wow. So if you play Trivia Pursuit, customers have I told me it's in the board game. <laughs> so now you know the answer. Um, also, they've done studies, I, I believe it's the University of Utah, where they study people eating grass-fed buffalo for 20 years or longer, no sign of cancer. They haven't correlated it yet. They haven't been able to prove that. But that's a good, there's strong a good place to, to research. Right. Sure. If we're not eating, sure. If we are, if we're eating healthy animals that are closer to the wild, then it's better for us. Absolutely. Right. When you come to processing the yaks, the buffalo, is it the same story that you have to ship them elsewhere to be to be harvested and processed? Well, or? we do a combination. Um, we sell something. I think it's special to us. That I don't know anybody else that's doing it. We do um, what we call a paleo mix in our ground buffalo. Okay. So I'll explain a little bit more. Uh, if an animal is done paleo, it's done as a field kill. So we'll have a mobile unit come out, it's harvested in the field, it's uh, cut, quartered, and then brought to the butcher and cut and wrapped there. So I there's see. less stress on that animal. It's mm. done in its environment uh, here. Uh, the blood returns to the earth. You know, the, mm -hmm. the innards are recycled in the compost pile. So that is part of our paleo program. And now the paleo ground, if you look at Paleo Man, he ate the organ meats and he ate the fats and he yes, ate all those yes, things first. Yes. Which is what most other cultures do and Western culture we do the reverse, we eat the muscle first. So what we've done with our ground meat, for those people that don't like liver, they say, well I don't care, I don't like the taste of liver. Maybe they haven't learned how to prepare it properly. It's an extra process to cook it, to prepare it. So our Paleo mix will have 5% buffalo liver ground into the ground. 5% buffalo heart ground into Ooh. the ground. We Ooh. added an additional 10% uh, uh, fat to it, ground mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. So now your fat content could be maybe 17 to 23%. Which is a lot. Paleo of man ate 30 to 80% animal fat. That much? But he ate pastured fat. Of course. If you er, read the Primal Body, animals. Primal Mind, Nora's book, yeah. and yeah. you'll see um, they ate a lot of fat. And, and that's natural for us. It's good for our brain. It's, it's preventing <laughs> Alzheimer's <laughs> now. It's <laughs> helping cure MS. Um, all these things with proper nutrition, this is where it starts. You're the only people I know of doing a paleo mix, which yeah. is part of what drew us here because uh -huh. we're eating that way. Right. And to, to have even better to have it with animals closer to what our paleo ancestors were, were eating. The closer, yeah, so this on. is as close as you'll that, get. That's, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. 
And I love it that the animals are not stressed. You know, when they're when they're killed, they are done. They're they're home. Yeah. With familiar surroundings and probably a lot of familiar people and so on. Sure. So, anything else that we ought to let folks know about buffalo or the well, ethics, or this I mean, way of growing? Obviously, the the health benefits, the the selenium, the tire. Mm. Um, mm. You know, it's a it's a natural form of, of fat where the omega threes and every, and sixes and all that are balanced, and, and it's so important for our brains and for our nervous system to have that. They're curing children of ADD by increasing the fat. I have doctors that come to me, and now they're my patients or their children are my patients. Um, a lot of doctors have, you know, the standard run of the mill doctor has just a few classes in nutrition, yeah. not as much as we would hope they would have or think that they might have. And, and that's okay, um, but if they go back to what we ate hundreds of years ago and go back to that diet, they will cure their own children of ADD, and I've had people do it in, in six months. Their children would be cured of ADD. Mm -hmm. They increase the fat content. They've um, gone back to, to a pasture diet. They've removed gluten, they've removed sugars, they've, they've gone back to, to what was our diet 150 years ago. And, and even longer, I mean, and if you think longer, about right? it, because I mean, even before agriculture flip. and those, yep. the diseases of agriculture that sure. come with the grains. I mean, even the grains, 10,000 years maybe. Just a blip of time. It is. It's for what, 200,000 years we ate or longer? Millions or whatever. Yes, right. exactly. Right. Yeah. So, Alan, thank you. This has been this has been a wonderful tour. Thank you for letting yep. us meet your your animals. And I will add that it was wonderful to watch them running free. I mean, I had this image: your paddock is big enough that they could just, you know, be in their own bodies, not confined, and and fed well and living well. Thank you for thank you for what you're doing, and thank, thank you. you for this tour. I appreciate it. You're watching Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. You're at Pine Mountain Ranch with Alan Rousseau in Bend, Oregon, with animals that I think are going to be a whole lot, are a whole lot happier and healthier than what most of us ever see. Join us next time.